Hey everyone, it's Mia and in today's video we are going to be talking all about student housing. So quite a few people have actually DM'd me or commented asking me to kind of like give tips on finding a student house or just like things to look for or like location. So to save replying to everyone I thought I would just make a video about it because there's kind of a lot to say and I thought this would be useful to a lot of people. I don't know if it's like a little bit late for this year's people finding a house. I know that loads of people go really early and get a house in like November, December. I got my student house in January, probably around this time. So don't worry at all if you haven't found somewhere yet because loads of people go really early but it doesn't mean like you have to. Also I just want to say I am not an expert in any way, I am just talking from experience and from things that I've googled. I go to Bath Uni and they hosted like a help session kind of that I went to around this time last year. So yeah, that's where I'm getting my information from as well as just experience and things that I found useful, things that I've like needed or would want in a house now that I've actually lived in one. If you wanna see anything specific to do with my house, I did a moving in vlog and a room tour, so I'll link those down below. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel down below, and let's just get started. So I think the most important thing is location. Most cities that have a university have like a student area. In Bath, it is Oldfield Park, and then a lot of students live around there, so like Bear Flat, South Down, Odd Down, um, Twerton and Town. So before you even book a house viewing you want to look at the location and download the bus app for your city. So for Bath it is First Bus and look at the postcode of the house and university or town like wherever you go to the most. You want to be looking at both town and university really and have a look how far away it is how long your journey would be from that house to uni hopefully by the next academic year you will be on campus every day as usual so you want to be getting somewhere that is close to a bus stop in bath the ideal bus is the U1 so if you get a house close to the U1 bus stop or within a short walking distance then that is ideal. Um, if you're on the U2 bus route that's known as like not as good. I don't know if they'll improve it at some point. It just takes longer to get to campus. It's just not as reliable but don't worry if you like can't find somewhere close to the U1. It still gets you there at the end of the day or you can get the bus number one into town and then the U1 from town to campus. And this will obviously be different wherever you are, you can find this out in any city. Also what you want to look at is how far your house is from like the main street in that area. For example in Oldfield in Bath the main street is Moorland Road where it has like everything on there like Little Sainsbury's and it has like pubs and video lounge and post office like literally everything on that street so if you're close to that main street then it is really useful just for like going to the shop and everything the best thing to do would be to print out a map of your city and then circle all the areas you go to most or will use the most so for me it would be university although it haven't been that much this year but uni town uh local shop and post office I do go to quite a lot actually. Also you might want to consider like a gym if you're into the gym like it might be useful to get somewhere that's like within walking distance to a gym. Just bear in mind the gym in the student area is going to be so so busy so like pure gym in Bath you cannot get in, you can't get student membership anymore like if you're joining now you can't get student membership because there's just too many people. So yeah, the main thing you wanna be focusing on is the location, that is the most important thing in my opinion. Um, just a quick note on living in town. So I don't live in Bath City Centre, it's obviously more expensive. The people I know living in town pay about 600 a month for rent and yeah, I pay 490 a month rent. 
in Bath the average is 450 to 550 so yeah something I'd say about pricing is like you kind of have to throw worth out the window when it comes to student housing because everything is a rip-off it is really expensive to rent in general but yeah student rent is kind of expensive and yeah you just have to like not really go on worth but go on just how much you can afford but yeah on living in town I've heard from the people I know that live in there it is so handy like they absolutely love living in town the only disadvantage is obviously the price of the rent and also because you're in town they end up like spending more money because you can just like walk to the coffee shop it's like two seconds away and things like that so yeah you may un end up spending even more money if you live right next to all the shops and restaurants but if you've got the money absolutely go for it like living in town would be really cool and also you'd save money on ubers after nights out and everything like that some things to look for when you are looking around houses is utilities for example washing machine dryer dishwasher iron iron it iron and ironing board mop hoover so dishwasher is a luxury i don't have a dishwasher in my student house like it's not an essential but like if you find one with a dishwasher just know it's special washing machine and dryer is a must hoover is a must i don't have a mop me and the girls are like not willing to buy one so we literally just like spray the floor with antibacterial spray and like just like get it with a tea towel or something but a mop would be useful also something to look for like in the main areas like kitchen living room i mean kitchen wouldn't have the same way but carpet in your main area is like not ideal the amount of times i've spilled stuff on in like the living room especially if you're hosting pre's having a house party things like that like you don't really want carpet on the downstairs but again like that's a really specific thing like if you find a nice house and it has carpet just go for it but but i would just say like if you're looking for like the elite house then not carpet on the downstairs because you will spill stuff and then you have to pay out your deposit something to consider which i feel like a lot of people don't consider is security of the house i think it's really important i didn't think about this when i was looking around only since i've lived in the house and i'm really lucky that the house i live in is like really secure i've actually done like extra measures to make it more secure but yeah it's worth just double checking when you're looking around the house look at what type of locks there are um, if the windows lock, especially the downstairs windows. Just like basically how easy it would be for someone to break into your house. Theft from student houses is, you know, I have heard cases of it. This is especially important if you live in an area which is considered to be like not as safe. Bath is considered to be really safe, but I have heard some cases of break-ins, like stealing stuff from student houses. I think it's just worth checking about how secure the house is. And don't forget you can sort of like negotiate with the landlord a bit, like just say to them whilst you're going around, I'm not really happy with this, like I, I love the house, I want to take it, but could you change this? And they might say yes. The landlady for my house, she actually will do anything we ask basically. So when we moved in, there was four double beds and one single and we asked her to change it to a double. And she was like, yeah, sure. And she did it um, free of charge. And also a few weeks ago, I said about putting a shelf in my room. I was like, oh, like I can put it up myself and everything. Would that be okay? And they were like, oh, no, no, we'll do it for you. Don't worry. So yeah, just ask them when you go to the viewings what they're willing to like do for you. When I don't live in the house I do at the moment anymore, I am more than happy to reveal like the street I lived on and company of like the house. What's it called? The company the agency is that what it's called um i'm more than happy to reveal that but for security reasons at the moment i'm not going to parking is pretty important especially if you're bringing your car you need somewhere to park it so a lot of places will have free street parking um some places will have a driveway or like parking around the back of the house or um some places you might have to buy a permit to park outside your house and also you need to know like how many cars you can park there because um say if like you've got five people in your house they all want to bring a car that might not there might not even be enough space another thing to note whilst you're looking around the house is don't worry if it doesn't look that nice because when people are living in it it will look a mess 
Um, when we looked around our house, it didn't look that nice, but the photos look really nice because it was empty. Go off of the empty photos because when you move in, it will be empty and you will make it nice for yourself. Like, yeah, when we looked around our house, um, all the rooms, literally every single bedroom, you couldn't see the floor. It was so messy. But then when we moved in and like five girls, we all decorated it so nice. It's so, it's really nice now. So don't worry too much if it's like not like ideal when you look around because don't forget it will be yours when you have it if you know what I mean. A few other things, smoke detectors, like by law you have to have them in house so um, every student house should have them but just double check that they're there. I feel like it's quite easy for landlords to just slack on student houses because they think that we wouldn't care about stuff like that. Also make sure you look at like the ceilings and especially in the bathrooms like walls, ceilings, check if there's any signs of like damp mold. Also take note of how warm it is when you go into the house. Um, make sure it has like heating and everything. Also when you're doing your viewings, record straight away. As soon as you arrive at the house, just start recording on your phone, outside the house, when you're walking in, just every room, because you will forget. You will forget everything, what it looks like. You might wanna decide like who's having what bedroom. Also when you record, you'll also record like the sound of the landlord speaking so that's really useful because you can like listen back on everything about the house if they promise anything to change about the house make sure you get it in an email just like in writing so that they can't just like decide not to do that because if that's a deciding factor of you getting the house then it would be like really shit if they didn't do that for example when we looked around ours it was it was like nice but it wasn't like, wow. I mean like no student houses, wow. Like I, we didn't need it to be amazing. But they did say that they were gonna renovate it that summer. And we were like, oh, that'll be like way nicer when they renovate it. And they did in the end. And it is just so much better because of the renovations. If the existing tenants are there when you look around the house, you can just ask them stuff, just be like, what's it like living here? Any like advantages, disadvantages? Like the girls that took our house this year, um, I was just completely honest with them. They messaged me on Instagram and I told them everything about the house, the advantages, the disadvantages. Tenants might not feel confident like saying anything bad about the house when the landlord is there. So it might be worth being like, oh, would you mind if I texted you about this or took your social media or something like that. They might say no, but it's worth asking because I think if you message them privately, they would be more honest about it. You can ask them how much the bills are. My bills are £37 a month, which is water, gas, electric, Wi-Fi. We're on this like weird thing where they just charge us the same amount every month. And then at the end of the year, if we've used more, we'll just pay a big fee at the end of the year. So like, Probably will be a big fee at the end of the year, but oh well. Now I'm gonna say a few things about costs, fees, contract. So you might have a holding fee, which should be no more than a week's rent. The deposit should be no more than five weeks rent. Um, I think our deposit was like 520 pounds. The deposit should be held in a tenancy deposit scheme, something like that. And you should get a confirmation like your deposit has gone into this specific thing. There's like, com I don't really know how it works, but there's like companies that like hold the deposit for you. It shouldn't be the landlord. You shouldn't be paying any admin fees. There was like a housing act passed in 2019, something like that where admin fees are like gone, like you shouldn't pay them. The contract, you have to read the contract. I know it's so annoying, but you need to read it because there could be something dodgy in there. I personally read the whole contract. It's quite easy to understand. Um, there are quite a lot of like law terms in there. Um, I took a law module in first year, which is why I knew what everything meant, but you can easily just like Google everything. You could always get one of your parents to read it if you don't understand. Or the ideal situation, if you or any of your housemates know a property lawyer, is that what they're called? Property lawyer? Property solicitor? Then if you get that person to read the contract, that would be even better because they can just do it like really quickly. Something about the contract um, that is probably in every contract is this thing called joint and several, which basically means every person is responsible for the whole of the rent. So even though you've got your separate rent per person, if someone decides to like just take off, like I don't even know, this wouldn't happen. But just in case, if someone like 
some reason couldn't pay their rent, didn't pay their rent, didn't live there anymore, and their guarantor, I'm assuming everyone knows what a guarantor is, it's like someone that will pay your rent if you didn't, so like your parent. So say if though them and their guarantor didn't pay it, then all the rest of the people in the house would have to pay it still. We haven't changed that in our contract, but I do know one of my friends that managed to change it and just said like, no, we don't, we're, we're not gonna be responsible for anyone else's rent. We're only responsible for our own, which is the ideal situation. So if you want, you can try and change that. I think they had a property lawyer look over their contract, change it, and then send it back to the landlord saying like, this is the new contract and they accepted it. So I don't know if it would work for every single landlord, but it's definitely worth trying if you want to and the last thing about costs and fees is contents insurance now i have been through such a long ride trying to get contents insurance so yeah insurance is completely up to you all of the landlord's furniture should be insured already our landlord said that we don't have to insure anything that's not ours like they should have house insurance and contents insurance for their furniture. I think that's almost everything. The last thing I wanna say is about people, the people you're living with. So I think that ideally you wanna be living with like-minded people and here is why. And by like-minded, I mean like similar attitudes towards things that affect the whole house. For example, coronavirus restrictions house parties, alcohol, drugs, having people over. So the reason you wanna be with like-minded people in this sense is because it does affect the whole house. For example, with coronavirus stuff, I know a lot of people that have had conflicts in the house this year because of the restrictions. Some people wanting to follow them, some people not wanting to. Hopefully this won't be an issue for anyone renting a house from like September onwards, but we might still be living with restrictions in September, like who knows. For example, if four people in the house wanna have a house party and the other person really hates the idea, they don't want that many people in the house, they don't wanna break the rules, all this stuff, that is gonna cause so much conflict. I see so much, like obviously you'll always like get over it, but I think the best solution is to either just live with people that all feel the same about things like that, or be willing to compromise because you don't want to be like falling out with someone in your house. I'm trying to think of examples like, you know, if someone has coronavirus, the whole house has to isolate. What if some people are not willing to? They're like, no, I'm not going to do it. That is going to be tension. Say if someone's seeing their family member, like in a few days, weeks, whatever, and they say, can we like be careful for these next few days so that I don't pass anything on to the family member and people are like going out to house parties and stuff, you know, that's gonna be tension again. Also just things to do with alcohol, like obviously this can easily be solved, but you know, if four people out of five in the house are wanting to drink every night, just like socialize, and the other person doesn't wanna do that, like you might feel a bit like, oh, I want that person to be involved or you don't wanna leave them out, but if that's not what they want to do that's not what they want to do you know so yeah it's just worth thinking about like your routines and like what everyone wants in terms of those sort of things and the last thing is everyone you're living with needs to have a similar budget or you need to be willing to go with the person that has the lowest budget so if someone can't afford more than 500 pounds a month you cannot even suggest houses that are over that because that's just going to cause so much stress for everyone so yeah i think that's pretty much everything i have to say um like i said most important is location but yeah that is pretty much everything i really hope this video was helpful to some people like i said i'm not an expert i'm just talking from my own experience definitely do your own research your university should provide you with resources of like you know to help you but yeah thank you so much for watching if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel down below and i will see you guys in my next video bye